friends, how are you doing? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is safe out there. We're living in tough times right now and a lot more people is going to spend a lot more time at home. We are producers and we are kind of trained to spend time at home in our studios, not going out. So I think we can make it. I try to contribute to this thing by making videos, keep my video coming out. So uh, you'll find something to get entertained with, I hope. For this video, I thought about making a mixing, a recording a mixing session of an edit that I finished the um, past week. Uh, I've been asked many times to share my, many times to share my mixing process. So here we go. Before starting, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. This will help the algorithm to spread the video. And also I have an Instagram in which I post way more stuff. Uh, work in progress basically and also me complaining about stuff uh, of the world but mostly things about music so if you want to follow me you find the link down below let's get started okay so the edit is of a track of laidback called cocaine cool the arrangement of the edit is pretty simple i have drums sub bass a couple of pod and just one other kind of sound so it's really really simple uh, <clears throat> i kept the the basic pattern of from the original song and this is and this goes always along the track and then i have some of the 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 chorus and the verses from the track let's take a listen to the track Let's take a look at the drums first. Um, I made a group with all the drums. So I have this kick, which is crazy. It's from the CR78. It's a drum machine and it's from the Gold Baby Pack. Um, then I have two or three loops. The first one is this loop. It's just to give some movement to the the low frequencies of the drums and it's pretty heavy EQ'd because the original one is like this and I basically cut all the high frequencies just to keep the lower part okay so I have my drum rack so I keep the kick out of this drum rack so I can set the reverb for all the instruments of the drum rack apart from the kick which I don't want to get the reverb on uh, I use this reverb which is the true verb I like to keep a kind of short reverb like it's in a small room then I have my casual drums my casual drums are basically all the sounds that I want to repeat but in a long, long number of measures so it gets repeated after um, a while so it looks like it's never the same the track looks like it's never the same because it's like very long this loop you, this is 53, 61, it's 8 measures and this is 16 so it's pretty long before repeating itself Then I have my noise percussive sounds. They are basically the sounds from my sample pack that I tend to use quite too much lately. I have to do a new one for sure. Then I have this beautiful loop, shaker loop. The level is really low. And then the last loop from the drum channel is um, this cowbell.
Okay, so these are the drums. Uh, then I have the bass, which is recorded from plots, from the module plots. It's really simple. I wanted to keep it simple this time. Uh, if you take a look here, these are all the different uh, versions of the bass that I tried. I kept a simple one because the bass is really powerful, so I, th I think it's good with long notes because it keeps so much, it takes so much space and I like it anyway. Okay, then what do you, and then we have the pods. This is Profit with a bunch of automations. The preset is Fifth Peter, nice name. Then I recorded apart from this sound, I sampled it and I keep running for all the track. Then we have the Omnisphere. I just started to use Omnisphere. It's such a powerful plugin. The sound is pretty processed. So this is the original sound. I love Corpus. And I keep it moving with the LFO. I move the DK. We have our friend Chorus and the LFO2, LFO2, and that's it. Then we have this guitar, this is also from uh, Omnisphere, but I sampled it uh, because I liked just one part. This is the one. And then we have the uh, original track. Also this is pretty processed because I wanted to take away the bass frequencies, not to interfere with my bass line and my kick. This is the original one. LFO tool so the kick doesn't interfere with the downbeat of this loop. It's probably it, it it's not needed, but I always use it, especially when I use um, other tracks to make an edit. Then we have the grain delay. Really subtle. The chorus helps me to divide. Uh, the signal from the center, from being super mono to be more a stereo sound, so it leaves space for my stuff and the original parts are set more on the sides. You can clearly hear the difference. For the vocal parts, this was much harder because the original part was like this. So first cut on the low frequencies. Second cut, just on the mids, I do a much higher low cut. Then I have the LFO uh, just to kill the kick because the kick of the original track is pretty powerful. So it leaves space for my kick. And then the C4 because I wanted to do a little bit more on the bass frequencies. Also the voice get affected by, by these cuts. So 
Of course, the voice in my edit is not powerful as the original one, but I, I kind of like how it sounds. Okay, so uh, the kick at the moment uh, has just this quick tech plugin, which enhance a little bit the low frequencies. I should. Try to attenuate a little bit the low frequencies because they are taking a lot of space in the mix. So then when I have to do the master and stuff, they, 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 they're going to cover, to they're going to excite all my plugins and I don't want that. So let's try with this a little cut and this attenuation by 1 dB on the 60 Hertz. Then here I have all my single sounds. The EQ is really simple. I just cut the low frequencies of all the sounds basically because I just have the kick and the bass for the low parts of the spectrum. On the bass line, I'm using uh, several plugins. When you record a bass line from modules, uh, it really depends depends from the sound that you use. This one, I thought it, it needed more, so I tried to treat it as better as I could. The R bass is a super plugin from Waves. It's uh, basically a harmonic exciter. Uh, so you choose the root note frequency and the plugin adds harmonics starting from that frequency. Okay, so I choose the 50 Hertz because it was the frequency of the note that I really want, wanted to uh, feel in the mix and So if I if I raise up the level Then I have a um, Pro Q. The bass was, is making some notes that are higher in pitch, so and I wanted to keep all the levels pretty equal. So this Fab Filter Pro Q3 allows me to use a sort of multiband compressor. So when the bass hits certain frequencies, it compresses them. You see? Then I have the decapitator. The decapitator is a saturator, so it's adding harmonics as the R bass, but in a different way. So. I kind of liked the sound it added. It's a day-night difference, the LFO tool, because I wanted to uh, give more space to the kick. Uh, pod, so here, well, just a little bit of EQing, probably. Oh, the shaper. So this plugin, this is not a mixing tip, but it's a more of a production tip. Shaper is a super instrument from Max for Live. It's similar to LFO, but it's working more like a an envelope, and it's really good. We'll talk more about this effect in another video. Try to experiment the corpus if you didn't if you didn't. It's a really nice plugin to use. Audio effect is included in Ableton, as you can see. And yeah, so now let's let's move to the to the real mixing. So what what is left to mix? Basically, what I want to do now is to balance the drums, to correct some levels on the drums, and to try to use a technique that I learned yesterday from a video from Stefano Ritteri. So what I'm going to do is to listen to the track and trying to balance the levels.
I created a group for the drums. Now I create another group for all the others, uh, all the other sounds. So pod, pod sampled, Omnisphere, and guitar. This is my second group. We call this sounds. So I have drums, plots, uh, so the sub and sounds, and then the two, um, the two parts from the the the, the original song. So. Let's hear sound. So what should we do here? I think it's perfect. Maybe we can add some saturation. Uh, our friend Decapitator. If you don't have Decapitator, there are a lot of other saturators. Uh, also the saturator from Ableton itself. So where do we want our saturation to happen? To the, the low frequencies or to the high frequencies? I think we, we should find, I think we should apply the saturation to a middle, to the middle range because we have enough bass frequencies from the bass. <laughs> I like this frequency. Now, of course, we don't keep all the we don't keep all this saturation. We just want to give like a seven. Okay, I I I I'll keep the drive pretty high, but I'll I lower the the mix so the dry wet like below 50%. I, li I like it, I like it. Okay, this is way too hard. The technique that I was mentioning before that I learned and I want to try is to use the plugin from Waves, which is called NLS, NLS Channel or Bus, which is basically a console emulator. So it's like your sound is going through an analog console and then going back to your computer. So it, it gets a little bit colored, the sound come back a little bit richer. This on the drums, which is stereo. I'll I'll choose the the spike model, which is the uh, emulation of the SSL. Then we have on the plots, it's mono, so we're going to use the mono version of the NLS channel. Sounds is stereo again. And then on the master, you use the bus. So this is like you're going through the single channels and then through the master channel or through a bus channel and then back to your computer. This is what is written in the instructions. Boom. Another cool, things, cool thing is that you can add drive to the sound. So if I switch it on and off, it's hard to hear the difference. It's hard to hear the difference. You hear the difference when you increase the drive. Let's let's set to the maximum. So the SSL is the more the more transpar transparent. I can set the drive at the maximum level, but I want to to add a little bit of drive. Same for the bass. Same for the sounds. I don't need it on the vocals and on the original track because it's already mastered. 
so it makes no sense. On my drums group, I always use a bus compressor. It could be the glue compressor from Ableton. It works fine. I have another one that I bought. It's an emulation of the Distressor. It's not the expensive one from UAD. You could ruin your drums setting the compressor in the wrong way. So it's key to set it in the right way or in a really subtle way you don't want to destroy the sound you may want it if it's intentional but if if it's not it's better to keep the compressor really really calm so a thing that i do is to set the high pass so the compressor will work only on the higher part of the spectrum i don't want it to affect the bass frequencies. This is something that I always do. Not everybody does it. I don't want to compress my bass frequencies for the moment. I'll try it like this. Raise up the gain. Raise up the attack. Really long attack. I don't want to kill the transients. Transients. Slow release. The slow attack, fast release help the, the background sounds, the hi-hats to be more in the front. One to three dBs of gain reduction, it's okay to me. Always try to keep the, the volume of the drums before and after the compressor the same, so you don't get tricked by the different volume. You, you, you think it's better just because the volume is higher. I think the track is okay. In my last video when I said that the mix and the master was okay, I did like 15 mix and master versions. So I don't want to say the mix is it's good, but now it looks good. Okay, probably the bass is a little bit too high. The thing that I notice is that when I don't have the kick on, the clap is really loud. When the kick gets in, the clap is being uh, covered by the kick and that's probably because of the compressor which is kind of strange because the compressor is not working on on the compression of the kick because it's it's side chained okay let's check one last time the track i think i fixed problem on the drums by uh, reducing a little bit <clears throat> the compression I moved from 3 to 1 to 2 to 1, so now it's just a couple of dBs of gain reduction. And yeah, so let's check it one last time. To make the track sound good, 
I think one of the, the main techniques is leveling the sounds, so choosing the right levels. And I still struggle a lot to do it good because sometimes it looks good in the room and then you go out, you hear it with a friend and says, but isn't it, isn't this too high? Isn't this too low? And you actually realize it's true. Your ear was fooled by the continuous listening of the same track. So leveling is so important. Then we have the compression on the drum bus. This is pretty important in my opinion, but it's important to do it good. I prefer to keep it less compressed and maybe then in the master phase, keep the, the RMS of the track lower, but have a higher dynamics. That's what I do. Uh, I still have to learn to compress it in a good way. I try. I also try to have some EQ on the drum bus. A technique that I learned from Luca Pretolesi. Uh, I say in Italian pronunciation, Luca Pretolesi, super engineer. Uh, for example, cut up to 250 hertz in the uh, in the side field. So. like here you increase a little bit between two and six if i don't remember wrong between five and seven sorry five and seven this is the presence of the track, so you have it a little bit also on the sides, a little bit more present. these frequencies particularly this makes this makes a huge difference okay I think it's okay I don't want to over EQ Okay, let's call it a day. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it's been interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you use other techniques that might be useful to share and subscribe to the channel, stay updated, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye. Cheers.